All right, what's up? It's Leonidas here in Samarkand. I am in the temple that is, or not the temple, the mausoleum, the mosque that is in the center of the city. So basically when you arrive, this is like pretty much the main thing that you'll see. And I'm actually inside one of them. So I'm going to show you around the place as I head out from out of this uh, particular mosque into the center of these uh, three mosques that are in the middle. So they act as mosques slash mausoleums and a mausoleum is where they bury the dead typically. And right now it's nighttime, so it's a light show. There's a nice light show that's going on as well. Now my thoughts of uh, Samarkand, and I'll, I guess, go work backwards from Samarkand to the other cities that I visited. And then ultimately we will conclude with my overall experience here in Uzbekistan over the last week and a half. You can see it's a very nice, fancy, schmancy uh, building. A, a lot of it has been restored because after the fall of the empires that were here previously, when they lost to the Russian Empire and then to the Soviet Empire, it was everything that just fell into ruin. So if you visit other cities in Uzbekistan, other ancient cities, pretty much these, these types of mosques are in, in a ruinous state and there is a, an initiative right now to repair them as well. Nonetheless, Samarkand is a nice city. It's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite city, but it's for ancient historical elements because everything here is a little bit more modernized. The roads are nicer. There's a lot more investment that has been put into the reconstruction of the city. And as such, you know, it's pretty much very touristy as opposed to the other cities, which are also touristy, but they're kind of still under development. So they feel more like the ancient aspects of ancient society but nonetheless these particular mosques are the most grandiose that i've seen thus far in uzbekistan and the city that i went to previously before this was called bukhara another city that was eventually captured by the russian empire and then again by the red army of the communist party of uh, russia and that city was a little bit much smaller than Samarkand and it was pretty much less modernized than this one. It was the center of the city itself is very much underdeveloped, like everything is very, very ruinous. So and then before that, it was Hiva and Hiva is probably my favorite out of all of them because you can pretty much take a photo of the entire city fortress. So Hiva is a city fortress in the north western well the middle western area of uzbekistan and it's much nicer overall and much more ancient so to speak the process of arriving in uzbekistan i have two passports as some of you may know and i tried to enter here on my canadian passport but i had to go through a First, I had to purchase a letter of invitation from one travel organization. It cost 60 bucks, but I paid an extra $20 so that it would be expedited, expedited. And then once you receive the letter of invitation, you go to the visa office. I did that all in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Once you arrive at the visa office, it's pretty hectic. The Uzbekistan visa office are very much unorganized. And there you give them your passport eventually, then the guy comes over and you wait a little bit then he gives a little slip you take it to the bank you pay for your visa at the bank then you come back with the slip and then eventually he gives you your passport and I was able to do that within like an hour or two so it's actually a pretty quick process even though it was a little bit hectic overall or it seemed really hectic and the food here in Uzbekistan is absolutely delicious and very, very cheap. Like you can have a full dinner and you can feel absolutely full after it for about three to four dollars. It is amazing, the food here and very inexpensive. So the, the cost slash deliciousness is incredible here. As well, the tea here, if you ask for lemon tea, it's always sweet. They put a lot of sugar into it and I like sweet tea. So it's one of my favorite, one of my other favorite aspects here. There's a thing called plof, which is rice with various vegetables and meat. Typically it's beef. Now I try to stay away from beef, but in this case, they 
rarely have substitutes for chicken. So they sometimes rarely have chicken. So typically pilaf is made here as well with the beef. These tip particular lights are New Year's lights. As you can see, it's a adoption of a little bit of adoption of Christmas lights as well. Yeah, so this is one of the other mosques and mausoleums. And the people here are relatively friendly. It's a, it used to be a communist state, so religion was typically suppressed here. Once the communism ended, the religion was allowed to flourish once again. And now the people have this interesting mixture of this mixture of liberal, progressive slash conservative Islamic culture. So that's the interesting aspect of it. We're going to show you one last section of the, the mosques and then that will conclude my video. Now getting around, I took a flight from the capital of Tashkent, which is, I didn't actually describe it, but Tashkent is more of a, it's very much a modernized city with very relatively new buildings. There's a lot, like a really lack of ancient buildings there. It is more of a development by the communist state that eventually took over. And I took a flight for about $45 US from there to Hiva, which is the farthest city you could possibly go to on a, a flight for the sake of tourism, I guess. And th that was only $45. It was a one hour flight. And then you have to basically negotiate with the with the taxi drivers because if they see you're a tourist, they will speak with you in English and then they'll try to rip you off about three to four times the rate. So typically taxis should only cost about two to three dollars, but they will literally go up to ten dollars because they can see you're a foreigner and you are probably a dumb foreigner, just as I am sometimes. All right, let's go inside. Let's see actually what this one is called. This is called the Shardor Madrasha. Madrasa, and it was built in the 16th to 1600s to the to the mid 1600s by an architect named Abdu Jabor. So each one of these was built, I guess, in separate times, depending on the economic state of the state itself. And the last mosque mausoleum. So I took a flight from the capital to the city that I wanted to. And then after that, I simply paid for taxis between different cities because sometimes the flights were simply not available or they went back to the capital and then to the next location. So I prefer to just pay for a taxi. Taxis were typically from 40 to $50. And you're pretty much paying for like a six hour ride for 40 bucks. So it's a pretty good trade-off. And most of these taxi drivers are going back home anyway. So for them, it's really good money. And on the way, they always offer to buy a little bit of food for me or something, which is nice. The safety level here is enormously high. No issues thus far with safety. I think it's a very, very safe place. I haven't partied here. Looks like somebody might be having a party or a light problem up there. And that concludes our little tour. There's a really cool graveyard in Samarkand. If you want to check out the photo album, I'll be posting on premium23.com. Once this Islamic culture adopted the communist culture, they started to build a very communist style cemetery where you actually see the photo of the person on the cemetery itself, which is really cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it. After this, I was planning to go to Dushanbe. I was planning to take a taxi to the border of Tajikistan. But ultimately, I decided to go back to Canada. I bought a ticket for about $570 from Central Asia to Canada, US. $570. And in Canada, I have to do take care of a bunch of business-related stuff, money-related stuff. And then I will continue traveling to a warm place because I I'm not a big fan of cold places. Leonard is here. It's near the end of 2017. It's probably be the last video for the year and hopefully I'll 
this doesn't end up being posted in the middle of 2018 or at the beginning of 2019 because there's a lot of countries I'm sure I will continue traveling to. Leonard is here, Uzbekistan, Samarkand. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a nice little walk around and I will see you in the next video, wherever that may be. Cheers, salute.